I think it was necessary. It needed to happen 15 years ago there. Hi there. It's Red Hornby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel here. And one of the videos that I promised to make last month there, when I was talking about talking about uh, doing some trade retrospects, and I also finally got my jersey ranking video out here. Although, it was last week that it actually happened 15 years ago when officially the 2004-05 season was cancelled there. can't believe it took until the middle of February. Back in 2005 there, where Gary Bettman, the commissioner there, we all love to rat on him, on all his gimmicks and that, and how he seems to uh, go to bat for Sun Belt teams there, but, you know, the, he's done some other good things in the NHL there, and that's growing the game there. But looking back, as bleak as it was 15 years ago, I think the NHL needed that lockout. The lockout was necessary that wiped out the 2005 season there to get the NHL at the point it is now there. Because I think things are definitely better in the NHL stemming from that lockout there. I mean, the big reason why I feel that the that lockout was necessary was because they needed that to get back into having an economic system here. As there definitely was a huge disparity between the big market teams and the small market teams after, you know, there was a player strike in uh, 1992 there, where players stri strike for 10 days there to uh, try to get more money there. And then we had the lockout that wiped out half the season 1994-95 there, but then it was after when that CBA was signed. It was a t it was 10 years there. The gap between the big and small market teams definitely was widening there. Where teams like the Calgary Flames, for example, could not compete and sign big name players or keep big name players, and it was definitely becoming more apparent from when you look back from the early 1990s up until 2004 there. And the fact that, uh, you know, one of my trade retrospect videos I made there, the reasons why many of those trades were made, especially when we traded Doug Gilmore away, we traded Joe Neundyke away, and I think one of the saddest days to being a Calgary Flames fan was when we traded Theron Fleury away. And the big reason why those trades were necess necessitated there was the fact that the Flames could not compete to keep players that they originally brought in or be able or they've acquired and definitely stepped up their game there and and they knew that they made more money elsewhere. So the NHL definitely needed to put in an economic system there and a salary cap there where eventually the, the Players Association was so against a salary cap there because uh, they, wanted, they figured it was going to you know, cut their pay down, and ultimately, I think that's not been the case since the lockout from 2004-2005 there. I mean, initially there, the league took a hit there because they did not make as much money there, but it seemed scary at the time that when the lockout happened, the NHL lost less money by not playing than playing. And yeah, I mean, there were definitely teams that loaded up there. I mean... Detroit Red Wings, I mean, obviously teams like the original six teams had what it take to sign, you know, all the big stars there. And New York Rangers definitely learned that you can't necessarily always buy championships there, but it definitely helps to have a marquee player there. And that was definitely the frustration that the Calgary Flames have had there is that it was like, well, what happens if you draft someone, you develop someone, and then suddenly you can't keep them because... You couldn't afford them because, you know, another team was able to spend as much money there. And there was definitely no, you know, constraint, no salary cap where, you know, anyone could make, pay him whatever and, you know, kind of bully the small market teams there. But eventually the Players Association, I recall, gave in and said, okay, we'll take a salary cap after, you know, you know, the Players Association at the time, what was also unique during the lockout that wiped out that season, eventually the players all volunteered to take a rollback. Because I remember 
I think they first agreed to a 5% rollback to try to save the game, and then all of a sudden it was a 24% rollback from existing contracts. But ultimately, they lost where the Players Association finally gave in to the NHL demands there that we needed a salary cap. And I think definitely we needed it because now there is more you know, revenue sharing there for everybody. And everybody can now potentially develop someone, keep someone. And, uh, you know, the only times that trades get made there either is for salary cap reasons or because... Uh, Hockey trades there, and one of the side effects of the salary cap I've noticed is that you either get you know your upper echelon players where they make you know mega dollars there, and then you have the entry level contracts there. It's all these those middle players that get squeezed out there because teams only have so much money to spend. But I still think it's still great for the game because uh, I mean it's revenue sharing. You know, the game's definitely. Better than ever there, and we definitely have had a lot more stability there. Because I know, remember the motive for the Calgary Flames there was we were our ownership group definitely was trying to keep hanging in there. It was keep hanging there till 2004, and I mean ultimately it just happened we went to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2004 there, and it sucked that we didn't have that season right after. You know what? That's one of those what ifs there. But I feel looking back, I think that lockout was necessary for the NHL to bring some financial sanity and to make the game better, bigger, better than ever. And definitely, I mean, there's definitely some cons with the salary cap in terms of only be able to spend as much as they have, but revenues seems to be keep going up here. Also, unfortunately, it gets to the point where the average fan, it's always been the case, it makes it harder to afford to go to the game here, but as long as you have enough uh, corporations that are willing to Pay the big bucks to get those expensive seats there, and uh, you know, the NHL is actually hoping to get a TV deal that could bring money back into the league there. Because uh, of the other major sports there, like definitely the NFL, the NBA definitely has gotten you know their act together over the years. They had some you know tr troubling times and lockouts there, but they did not lose a whole season. Those leagues definitely make a lot of money just on TVD alone. In the Major League Baseball, I mean, it's the only of the major four leagues that does not have a salary cap there, and I still think uh, it probably would still do Major League Baseball a little better if they had a salary cap. I mean, some teams say if you go over a certain amount, you got to pay a luxury tax. Well, teams like the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees gladly pay that, but I think if there was a salary cap... Teams like the Montreal Expos would have been able to uh, maintain a better, you know, foothold and keep players. There. I mean, the Montreal Expos definitely uh, had a lot of players that uh, they developed and couldn't keep there. But I mean, unfortunately, it was just weird how that strike happened and wiped out the World Series. That's probably the next closest thing to uh, NHL canceling an entire season there. But we saw this coming for many years there, up going into the after the 2003-04 season there, that we knew the lockout was coming and we knew that the Players Association and the NHL were so far apart there that we knew there wasn't going to be hockey that following season there. And I was almost thinking that this lockout was going to go on so long here that the 05-06 season there might have been potentially canceled or still be in a lockout there. Fortunately, they were able to finally come to agreement there just after July 1st there. And, I mean, definitely also what made it crazy was the draft there because that was the year that Sidney Cross was available. And they kind of came up with the best solution where they had a weighted lottery so teams, they were based on performance there because you couldn't base it on a season that didn't happen there. But ultimately, after all that, this, I think this lockup was necessary. It needed to happen. And, you know, since then, only one team has moved. And, ironically... It was a Canadian team getting a Canadian team back. I think because of this economic system, the Winnipeg Jets are back in the NHL there. But we've added the Vegas Golden Knights. And come on, Seattle, just name your team to Kraken already. There'll be a 32nd team in Seattle there. And, you know, revenues are up. Players are making more money than ever before. To the point that the NHL and the NHLPA 
they opt out of the reopening up the CPA there because I felt this lockout that uh, that went to half of the 2012-13 season there. In that case, I blame the owners a lot more where they keep signing these green to pay all this money there. But it seems like now both sides are happier than ever and uh, are actually talking about extending the CPA and hoping for this TV deal. And they're hoping that they can agree so this TV deal can happen. And also the fact that Seattle's joining in the league there. But do you kind of have the same feelings as I did that when you look back as bleak as it was 15 years ago and despite the anger at Batman, good now definitely lost his job because the Players Association definitely lost in their war on no salary cap and eventually they caved in and said, all right, NHL, what salary cap do you want? And even then, the NHL played hardball to save that season. That They said, this is the best offer we had, and the salary cap was lower than what was offered that would have saved some kind of a season, you know, back February 15 years ago there. But uh, we needed this lockout. It was necessary to bring financial stability and sanity to the league here, but also the fact that the Calgary Flames could have, you know, compete, you know, go after big name players. Now it's almost like if I make the same amount of money elsewhere and also up the road with Edmonton there, where they could potentially keep Connor McDavid for his whole career here, knowing that he'll make twelve million dollars in Edmonton as he would in Vegas or Los Angeles or the New York Rangers. But Edmonton drafted him and the Calgary Flames, thankfully, because of his lockout here, we were able to keep Jerome McGinley as long as we did because I don't think Jerome McGinley would have been a Calgary Flame as long as he had. And I felt like we barely were able to hang on to him before the 2003-04 season there. He signed a two-year deal just before the lockout. And I felt like Calgary barely was able to hang on to him, and that was definitely critical because Calgary was trying to hang in there to 2003-04. I mean, ultimately we traded him more for you know, hockey reasons and moving on and giving him a chance to win a Stanley Cup there, as opposed to trade him because we couldn't afford him anymore because uh, that was why, you know, one of those trade retrospects that I made when we traded away Theron Fleury, I felt that wasn't as good of a trade considering how much he meant to the Flames and uh, what we got returning. Yeah, we got Rob McGuire in that trade. Then I always keep saying the Doug Gilmore trade was definitely the worst trade that the Flames made in franchise history, but you can probably say one of the best trades that the Calgary Flames made in franchise history was we couldn't afford to keep Joe Neuendijk. We traded away one of our best centermen, who ultimately was for Jerome Ginla in the best flame of all time there. But, uh, what do you think? Did we did we needed that lockout that wiped out the 2004-05 season there. So anyway, if you enjoy everything I do on my YouTube channel here, just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe to follow along with this Calgary Sports fans journey, on the Flames, Hitman, Rough next to Stan Peters there. So make sure you hit like, subscribe, and follow along by hitting that bell icon there. I also have my social media links in the description below there. Let's also follow along with this kind of sports fans journey. As I say, go Flames go, and I'll see you in the next video.